Greetings. I'm sitting here. Um, today is the, as I'm doing this, this is Tuesday the 28th of December 2021. And um, I'm sitting here in, in my kitchen and I'm really cold. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We have a fire going in the fireplace and I want to tell you that this last week we've had pretty much fires going all day, all day um, that we've been here. Rain or shine, we've had some rain and we've had some, um, it's, the sun is coming out now, it's going to be a pretty day I think, but it's still cold. This is what we in Southern California, some of us at least, refer to as our three weeks of winter, <laughs> which we typically get. In December, sometimes it goes into January, but mostly it's a December, maybe even a late November, when, is when we get our winter, which is very lovely for um, if you want to get bundled up during the holidays and bring out your little hats and your scarves and, and your gloves. This is the time to do it, but other than that, we have pretty temperate weather. Um, <clears throat> I do know that a lot of people have uh, complained about weather lately. I see a lot of obsession almost, I would say, with the weather. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can't tell you how many gallons of hot tea <laughs> I have consumed also during these weeks. But anyway, <clears throat> I was wondering, is it a, is it a modern concept, a, a, a recent concept, people being obsessed by the weather, or is it something we're always wondering about the weather? Now, I know as a somebody who grows, has a garden, I would be normally concerned about the, the weather. Um, here, I don't, I think everybody that has a garden thinks about the weather probably more than others, maybe. But mostly, a lot of people are monitoring um, things like rainfall, which most of the year when we're gardening, rainfall does not even play a part of our gardening. <laughs> we don't have rainfall for most of the year here. Um, an occasional whatever it <laughs> comes up once in a while, at least it seems to lately we have maybe a little bit of rain um, outside of our normal rainy season, but nothing measurable. But we have an arid, we have an arid climate, but we do monitor for things like heat, like heat. If it's going to be really hot, we need to know so we can get out and give some protection to our, to our plants that they don't burn. So I know every, every area has different um, problems and concerns with the weather, but it seems like everybody's worrying about the weather all the time. That's the, t it's my topic of conversation today isn't necessarily about the weather, but it, it, it is indirectly. Um, I noticed like on Facebook, people are always complaining and we, it, it really bothers me. We complain about, oh, it is so dry here. We complain, we don't have rain, we don't have rain. When we get one or two days of rain, everybody's like, oh my God, it rain, well, the rain never stop. It's just, uh, you know, make up your mind, <laughs> make up your mind. I was giving some thought to it. I was thinking, you know, I grew up in Pennsylvania. I've said that before in southwestern Pennsylvania specifically. And um, weather, we had four seasons, if you want to say. That's what people say. We had four seasons, even though I think everybody has any seasons, <laughs> more than four. But um, just it's just um, expressed in different ways, in different areas, okay? But um, I remember, you know, living in Pennsylvania and people, people had concerns, you know, when it was real hot or when it was, but nobody really talked about it all the time. Maybe my grandfather and his cronies on the bench <laughs> sat on the bench in front of the filling station, might have uh, spoken on their pipes. They might have had some things to say about the weather. That was sort of the stereotype, wasn't it, of what the old men talked about. But truthfully, um, I don't recall us, my parents, or, you know, really giving too much thought to the weather. In the winter, there was snow or not. It was cold always. Sometimes there was rain, but sometimes we had some temperate days. We always wanted it to be snowy around um, the holidays, of course. We wanted a white Christmas. It happened sometimes, sometimes it didn't happen. Um, in our nostalgia, we think of the white Christmases, everybody, 
But in the reality, how many of us have actually had a white Christmas this year? Um, so it, it's, it's more of a memory thing for us. I mean, we choose, it's a selective memory, what we choose. We remember, I do know, we moved here to Southern California in 1979, the end, very end of 1979. It was Thanksgiving, actually, when we moved here. We drove across the country the week before Thanksgiving. And the winter before, the winter of 1978, was one of the harshest winters in many, 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 many years in, in that area, in the Northeast area, maybe even along the East Coast, I think notoriously harsh with much much snow and ice and freezing temperatures and it was we, we have pictures of just about literally being buried in the snow um we have stories that we told of having to try to trudge our way out of the homes our homes to try to get out to the highway to try to get borrow cars to go and get some supplies for the family that we didn't have the supplies we had a lot of adventures in those days, but it was a very short time. It was one storm. We have memories here, as cold as I am here. I think it was the second winter. I think the first winter we had here, it was so warm at Christmas that I went on Christmas day, went out roller skating on the streets. <laughs> and that was like, that was how I spent my Christmas day. It was so nice and warm. But I finally, I hardly felt like it was Christmas at all because it was so warm to me and sunny and probably 75 or 80 degrees um, this year very very cold so what is it about the weather I don't know I have friends who live here in Southern California who have migrated elsewhere and their biggest concern a lot of are going to the Pacific Northwest <clears throat> my daughter here is visiting from the Pacific Northwest she left Southern California lived in Phoenix for a while and now it's into Pacific Northwest, which she loves. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but uh, she still loves it here, too. She loves, she, you know, she's not so specific to one climate, I don't think. But I do have other friends who have moved from California saying, Oh, I can't stand the heat. I can't. It's so, all the fires and the heat, it's just like a nightmare. Some have moved to the Pacific Northwest. And this summer, past summer we had, they had the heat. We did not. They had the fires. They had a lot of fires, you know, I don't wish that on anybody. That's nothing to do with seasons, but it is very reflective. If you have a lot of rain, you grow a lot of vegetation, and then the vegetation is a lot of fuel for fires when you have a very arid, dry heat wave. A lot more fires than normal. They spread faster, so they're connected. But it's not really fire season, even though we call it fire season heat. What is the purpose of this video? The purpose of this video, excuse me, one more, one more sip of my tea before my tea gets cold. I want it to get cold. <laughs> what I wanted to talk to you today is, um, I was think I was giving some thought about our weather here in Southern California and our, our seasons and, and the day to day how the day-to-day -day differences, the day-to-day -day differences that we see here. You know, as Wiccans or witches or um, people, spiritual people, pagans, whoever you are, you're something like that watching my channel, I don't know. Um, whatever your, your interest is, wherever your interest lies, we are really connected. We feel a connection to the earth. I think most of us with this common interest feel that connection to the earth. And um, so we, we maybe pay attention maybe to the subtleties that we see in nature. Perhaps this is why as I get older, the older I am, even after living here in Southern California for all of these years, 40 years plus, I am starting to really see the subtleties in our weather. It is not just, oh, it's 75 and sunny every day of the year. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. It is, we, I see all kinds of things. I feel the seasons here almost as much as I felt them when I lived in Pennsylvania. Maybe not so drastically, but I definitely feel a change. I definitely feel changes in the air, in, the, in, the, in my environment at different times of the year. Okay. But also, I'm starting to see our day-to-day -day 
a typical December day is not typical at all. A typical June day is not something at all. When I first moved to California, I was taught that we have something called May Gray and June Gloom. And that means in May, it's just gray. The sun never comes out, never comes out. It's just gray days, just gray days. The um, marine layer being close to the ocean, the air just gets sucked in and it, that foggy, misty stuff just doesn't go. In June, we have June gloom. It's very gloomy, very gloomy. Oh, it gets extremely gloomy at those at that time until the sun burns it off is what we call the sun burns it off. When the sun starts to peek through and that marine layer disappears, then the sun comes out. So sometimes in June, it'll be it'll be gloomy, gloomy, gloomy gray until 12 noon or one and all at once the sun comes out and it is a beautiful, beautiful, warm, sunny day. Okay, so I thought that was just in May, it was this way, in June it was this way. In January was earthquake weather. We call January earthquake weather because earth, we get these, after that cold, cold three weeks of winter that we experience in December, in January, we have days, freakish days of just out of the sudden, it'll be 95, like for no reason. We'll have a three or four day span of 95 or 92 degrees or whatever. And those seem to be the days that earth, we have an earthquake. Is it the truth? Scientists say not, but locals say, nah, I think it might be. <laughs> so I don't know. But I'm just saying there is not typical June or July or May or August or December weather here. There is not. And I'm going to show you how I know this <laughs> in my video. The video today is about enjoying the color of each day. Instead of complaining about the rain on the rainy days, we need to be enjoying the rain. We need to be thinking what the rain is doing for our gardens. We need to think here in California what the rain is doing for our drought conditions. We need to think about what the rain, you know, we need to be grateful when we have a roof that is in repair or that we have warm homes or dry homes that we can, we can escape to. Okay. I'm very grateful for my fire in my fireplace because I might, I don't have any heat on in my house. And it is very, very cold. I'm on a cement slab. My house is built on a cement slab. It holds it in like a freezer. <laughs> and I'm cold. It's been cold and many. It's been highs only in the, in the, well, I'm going to look today. Today's high is going to be, um, it says today's high is 48 degrees. I don't know. 52, 54. That is freezing for California. We are freezing. This is so cold for us here in Southern California to have a daily high temperature of that. And then we, of course, then in the nighttime, it goes down to maybe in the 40s, upper 40s or mid 40s. We have a temperature change of maybe 10 degrees. Or on a summer day, we can have a 95 degree day and a 62 night. So we have a big difference in, you know, the day and night here. Um, but anyway, I've been really interested in this day-to-day -day change and what, and enjoying the day, the subtly, enjoying the color of the day, enjoying that spring when it is a nice spring breeze and a nice temperate. Sitting down in my in my pergola on the front here, and watching my young summer garden just taking life and coming into life and and enjoying those times, um, just really trying to enjoy the weather when it is hot finding relief in an enjoyable way from the from it you know what can we do to enjoy just to enjoy those those that time of the year I came across something here on YouTube which is called a temperature blanket a temperature blanket what in the world is a temperature blanket a temperature blanket is something in the knitting and crochet world <laughs> and maybe I don't know some other things perhaps maybe even in like the quilting world I'm not sure um, that people are making to reflect the climate, the temperature, the weather of a year, a particular year. I think the design was was originally intended to help people, you know, people who knit or crochet or do crafts, those kind of things, fiber crafts, tend to have a lot of leftovers, a lot of uh, have partial skeins of yarn or small balls of yarn or, or small amounts of fabrics 
right, to what they want to use up, they call them scrap buster projects. And I was one of those ones of people who had, I have pretty much a, a whole yard, a whole room full of fiber, uh, different kind of fibers and material things, you know, that I have been using over the last um, 40 years that I've lived here in this house. Um, all kinds of knitting. I do knit, I crochet, I knob, do knob knitting, I weave. I weave dot leaves on ankle weaving, on table dot weaving, or um, small projects, loom weaving. Um, and I do, uh, and I sew. I was, you know, I've been making my own, our own garb for the SCA for the 20 plus years we've been in that. And I, I, I have quilted in the past. So I have a whole room full of stuff. So when I saw scrap scrap busting project I it got my attention and I looked up what it was and what it is it appears to be and I'm going to show you I have one started here some kind of a uh, I'll just hold up because I'm going to give you a better view of it uh, some kind of a, a blanket in this case it is crocheted which is going to be it ends up to be striped let me see, I'm gonna pull this so I don't unravel all my stitches that I've done so far. It's gonna pull a big, a big loop, <laughs> so I can't pull it out. Um, kind of tangled, let me see here. There we go. <laughs> Anyway, it ends up, the project ends up to be striped, striped. Okay, I can't, it's not really that long, but I can, you see how it changes? How it changes as we go into the, into the, and here's the beginning, okay? This was the very beginning where I started, okay? And um, the idea is that you knit or crochet a row, one row a day to represent the weather of the day wherever you are and I think people who do these uh, so that way first of all you're using up maybe smaller bits of yarn um, but for one project but also um, I find it very interesting oh and um, wait a minute. I mean I don't want to get ahead of myself here um, that you you can you can compare from here to I guess a lot of people who do these um, as a rule, you know, often, um, every year or whatever, then they can compare what was, you know, it like in, you know, in the, in 2020, what was it like in 2021? People that do them often, or they do different sizes. Maybe they'll just do little lap rope kind of things or throw, just little throw blankets, or they might do pillows or something in a smaller project with the same idea, just to reflect it. It's just, again, as like I said, intended to use up the scraps. But for me, it was a really, it was a lesson. It was an important lesson because for me, as you can see, now I started at, I started mine at the solstice in, in June, at the um, summer solstice. And so I, I started with two light rows because summer solstice is the lightest day of the year. Okay, so um, the longest day of the year. So I have just to mark the beginning, I'm, I'm going to do two rows at the beginning of light and I'm going to end at the summer solstice of 2022, so I will do two light rows, two of the lighter color yarn, and then just to mark that. And what I have done is I've divided it up into sabots. This is just because me, I'm, you know, why do it? So when I got to um, each sabot, I have divided it, up. it depending on whether it's light to dark or dark to light or dark to dark or whatever two rows, two rows, just so I can visually look at it when it's finished and go, oh, this was this Sabbath. This represents this period of time in the year. Most people don't do that because most people that make these, I don't believe, are interested in the wheel of the year. But for me, that was just one way that I go about changing it. Um, <clears throat> the fact that it was meant to be a scrap project, well, I had a lot of leftover sock yarn. This is wool and this is the way that I use for, for socks. So that's what, and I, it's a sport weight for me here in the States. But um, I use that because I had some. But of course, this is not all scrap to me. I didn't have this many. 
because you know when you're done in the blanket it's going to use a little bit more so I did have to buy some more a little bit more yarn to make this project but um, I'm still using a lot I mean it's still representing a lot of because nothing that I had was enough to do a project but when you have a little bit on the skein left it you can't make really anything out of it so um, I'm utilizing that and then adding more to it as I go and if you want to make it a truly a scrap project you will just use um, properties like I think a lot of people who live in climates that have a little bit more of a difference between a summer winter let's say month um, maybe they pick one color for temperatures that fall within this range. And that's what everybody does. Fall between the range of, you know, 60 and 70 is represented by, let's say, for instance, um, a blue, blues. So they use their blues between 60 and 70. Maybe you, they use their greens between, you know, 70 to 80. They maybe use greens. Maybe they use oranges. In the, you know, they just vary. So any shade of blue, any shade of green, any shade of orange. If that's the way you can do it, that's fine if you have that kind of temperature um, differences. For me, my temperatures do not have that. They have a big range, but I have so much of the year where it goes from 75 to, to 80 to 72 to 78 to 76. I would have a blanket that was pretty much one color in a lot of ways, and that would defeat my purpose. So what I did is I made up a key. I, I looked on my... First of all, I looked on my weather channel. <laughs> what I actually put at weather.com in, in my phone here, where I got calendars and I put in my zip code and I put in what kind of, it's like just archival of temperatures where what the temperature has been. And this is also very um, convenient so that you don't have to, you know, I, I don't sit here every day waiting for the high temperature and then rushing in and crochet in a row. That would just be silly. <laughs> that would be so silly. You know, but this way, it, it's archived. There's the calendar he is here. And I can look and I can see the temperature. I click push the date and it told me what the high and low was for that day for the zip code. That's why I'm always using the same, the same, the same um, source for my temperatures, because I can look on my thermometer that's outside my door. I can look on, you know, what the forecast temperature is, but what the forecast temperature and what the actual high was at this place are not ever the same, right? So, uh, but this way, I have the same source. I go back all the time. So relative temperature in one day and the next, the next, and the next is very accurate if you use the same source for every, every one. Okay, so that's what I did. And then I made a, like a, a key and that is this and I will show you I'll get I'm going to change my camera because I want you to be able to see this my key a little different but I keep this in my basket with my yarns where I have an actual the actual yarn that I'm going to use the actual color or colors in some cases I have more than one color in that whole one if I run out and I get another kind of yarn that will fit in there if it's in the same property as that I'll just add that to it you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute and so my temperatures here raise from, I basically have from 60 degrees, because I'm talking about the, the high temperature for the day, not the lows, just the highs. From 60 degrees to, I have, um, I have 105. Most of the time, most always, our highs are falling that. But I have added a, a, a um, category for from below 60, which I'm glad I did because this year we did have some as you see, I have some temperatures in the highs of the 50s. That's just so unusual, but that's what we had. So anything under 60, I have set aside a color. And anything over 105, we do do have from time to time temperatures over 105. They're kind of rare, but we have them. Some years we have them more than not others. Um, I remember it being maybe 109 or 10 here as a high, but that is very unusual for where I live. Not all of Southern California, people that live closer up or the valleys, they get higher, higher temperatures. Even in my own city, um, my daughter still, her zip code is the same as mine, living basically in the same city as I do, but she lives further inland than I do, and it gets hotter at her house than it does here. So her high temperatures would be different than mine, you see. So anyway, I just made the little key, and I'm keeping track of um, how I 
what you know what I use what I do and then the other thing I wanted to mention is on the back of my card since sometimes I might go weeks and weeks at a time without without um, recording the temperature so I get on my little app in that case and I take I look on the calendar and I write down for every day and I'll show you how I keep track of it just on scratch my, paper, my tablet here on scratch paper but since it sometimes is a long time there are only two rows two pack two rows in the pattern with what I'm doing I mean, they're, doing, they're all, it's all, mine is all in single crochet, but it could be all double crochet or treble, or it could be knit. It could be, excuse me, whatever you want it to be, it could be. But mine is just simple, simple single crochet, which is like the easiest thing to do. But there's a pattern, there is a pattern, which is a two row pattern. And so that pattern I put on the back of my card. The front card is, is the color coat back of my card is the pattern and I will get and show you that when I change my camera but it's just a real simple little way of making something really beautiful from the year and I'm just I've been so impressed because we tend to think of our homes as it's so hot here well here it has been here was our hot summer and you see how many cool days the reds and I'm just showing you from the distance but the reds and the yellows represent the heat when it gets down into greens, when it gets into the greens, it's more like just, you know, you know, anything 90 or above is in, <coughs> excuse me, in oranges or golds or reds, okay? Now remember, this came from the solstice, so this went entire, the entire summer into our um, second summer, third summer, fourth summer, I don't know how many summers we tend to say we have, I think there's three summers or four, we seem to end it. Locals say we have every year, like we have the the real summer, then we have the, the I don't know, we have the fire, the, I don't know, I, don't, I could look that up, but it's not even, that, it's not interesting, not interesting. But I want to say, how little bit of oranges and golds and reds, even reds, I have, I just have a very small stripe of red, like I only have done like one, two, three, four areas here since the beginning of this outcam, four, which are in the red, which is the high 90s. <coughs> Excuse me, 90, um, 97 and above. So this idea that we're just so hot all the time, kind of a fallacy, but see how beautiful and colorful. Now I'm into the greens and into the blues, and I'm even gonna be getting into some purples. <coughs> Excuse me, and, and into, because I have such um such uh it's cooler weather right now i have to break my camera i have to stop my camera because i'm coughing <laughs> i gotta get a drink of water but i'm also going to then i'm going to show you close up um what i'm doing and so maybe if you want to make one but you also get a get a closer look this is a good time for anybody who doesn't want to know anything about crochet or knitting or afghans or blah 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 to say goodbye so I'll say goodbye to you now. Bye. And the rest of you can stay tuned. I'll be here in just a second. Okay, before I can show you how we make this uh, blanket, I wanted to first show you two things I wanted to show you. First of all, this is the app on my phone. What I get off my phone that I can... Um, there we go. I don't know if you can see it or not. But it's weather.com. I just go... And here, this is... Um, it goes by month. If I wanted to know what it was in November, on November 10th, it shows me that the high for the day was 75. Okay. December 23rd. The high for the day was 58 degrees. 58. Wow, that was cold. <laughs> that was really cold. Okay, so I just, so you see, I don't have to catch up. The light might be bad here. I, I apologize. But I, I don't have to, um, do a day-to-day -day. I can just go back as long as you have some kind of an archive that, that is consistent that you can check your temperature every day then you'll be fine you'll be fine okay so there's that and then I want to show you my pattern card this has been in my blanket and on my <laughs> and on my uh I have I do have a bag that I keep it in to try to keep it in to keep it clean but you know <laughs> But I'm always pulling it out, and here I've spilled on it, and whatever, <laughs> like you do. But anyway, on the front here, I have 
my temperatures. I just made this up myself, and you could do the same for your, for where you live. However you want to break it down in increments. You see, I have really broken it down, very fine-tuned it, because I my temperatures are so clustered within. So I have here, you see, below 60, 60 or 62, I use this color. The temperature is 63 or 64, I use this color. You see, I have it very close, 69 or 70. I like this, this I'm um, having this key, my color key handy, so I can make sure when I'm crocheting that I'm on the right day, I'm I'm because I check back with my list. And also, um, I have it here in case I ran out, oh, I needed more of one, and I ran out, I need to get something else. I can look in my stash or elsewhere or something on sale or something in something I can use that is that is close to that. You know, it, it doesn't matter. I just want my overall my overall um, colors to be as true as they can be to each other, true as they can be to each other. Okay, so this is on one side. And then, of course, I have here this, this light color and this dark color at the top and bottom because I said I was dividing mine into sabots. Um, and if you can see anywhere, well, here you can see um, I'm, I have the light, the light color, this light color there, and the dark color in the next row. So this was the light going into the dark. So this would have been at um, um, equal light and dark would have been at Maybon. And I wanna show you then on the back, what I did on the back, I wrote temperature blanket and I wrote, in case I wanted to do another one like this, this was just the key that I used. Remember I am using, um, the kind of yarn that I'm using is um, different kinds of yarn. But it is, um, it is all wool. I use wool because that's my sock yarn. And um, all sport weight. It says sport weight here. And the other one says, um, here's a skein, sport weight. Well, the end is sport weight. Sport weight right there. So that it's all, all the same. Same weight. Or if I had something um, thinner, I could use like two, two, you know, double thread to try to get even. But you know, also in a scrap, if you're doing a true scrap blanket, you can have thick and thin. You can use all different color kinds of weight. It doesn't matter. It's it's you know, it's the overall weight. I just wanted this since I have a lot of sock yarn. This is sock weight yarn. I thought this would be fun. Anyway, so then I wrote, I chained just for this project so that I, because it was hit and miss. I didn't know what I was doing when I did it. So I just chained 300. This was with a, with a size G hook, and you don't have to have that. That's just what I was comfortable, and I thought it worked well with this weight yarn. Um, it fits the yarn well. Um, so I used a G hook, and I used I chained 300 to start my starting row, and then here is the whole pattern right here in the box. I do one row. And I'm going to show you that, what that is. I'm not going to do the whole row across, but I'll show you how you do it. You go one way across. You see I have a blue, I have it blue and orange. And that's because on one side of the, my afghan, I have a marker, stitch marker, that is orange. Okay. And on the other side of my blanket, I have a stitch marker that is blue. Okay. See that? Two different colors. And that's important. It doesn't have to be these stitch markers, but it has to be two different ways of identifying. So if I'm going across an orange row, I have, if I'm going across beginning a row that begins with the blue, I start out by doing a single crochet and then a chain, skipping over a, a stitch into the chain one space and doing a sing, another single crochet. Single, single crochet, chain, single crochet, chain, single crochet, chain, the whole way across the row, ending with that last chain and then a single crochet at the end. There's a single crochet both at the beginning and the end. And then um, if, it's, if I'm beginning with an orange, an orange marker, I do single crochet, single crochet, and then I do the repeat pattern of chain, single crochet, chain, single crochet. Continuing to the last two stitches are both single crochet. And I will show you that. I'm going to show you that because that's how we do the turns. And other than that, there's no pattern at all. <laughs> there's nothing else. There's nothing else to learn, okay? So I have just finished. Oh, and here's how I keep track of my, 
this is just a scratch tablet. And I when I when I think about it every now and then I get into the calendar into that little app on my phone and I have each date here and I have the recorded high. I just write them down. And as I complete the row, I just mark them off. That's simple. This is just scratch paper once I get to the end. Who cares? It's just gonna be thrown away. So I use any old paper. Um, here we go. And we have here I have I have done up to row November 25th. That's where my last row was, and it was 77 degrees. So 77 degrees. I used meadow green. So I'm just completing my row with grass. I'm going to uh, check that off. And I want to go into the next one, which is 78 degrees, which is um, metal green. Okay, I'm just finishing this row of grass colored, uh, my 77 degree colored row. And I'm coming up to the end. This is an end. I'm ending a an orange row. I know that because I'm coming up to a blue marker at the end. So it means I started with the orange. And so I just did a single crochet and a chain. And I see that my pattern is going to end with two single crochets. So I do a single crochet in my space. And again, I will show you when I have a, when I have a, in a minute, I'm gonna show you the stitch better so you can see, but there's a chain one space in there that I make a single crochet. And there's no chain here because it's the end of this, um, this pattern of this row. So I take my marker out and right where the marker was, I'm gonna make another single crochet and I will pull my thread up, but instead of finishing the single crochet, this is how we join a color in this, in this method. I just take the end of my next color, which is meadow, meadow green. Where's my end? Um, I'm all tangled up here. Here we go. I've got my end and I'm gonna just come up a little ways, leave a little bit of a tail. And I'm gonna take that as my pull through yarn. Pull to finish my single crochet. You see that? I'm dropping this, the green, I'm dropping this green. I'm gonna just tighten that up. And I'm going to take and make a single crochet here, which is a turning, I mean a turning chain stitch, which will help secure that end. There we go, turning chain. And before I turn, I'm going to cut off my old color. Leaving a little bit of a tail. And then I can just get that out of the way. And then I just roll that up. And what I do is I just roll it around here. Because I keep these in a basket here beside me. And um, all my working balls are right in here, in a basket. And now I'm ready to proceed with my pattern. Okay, so you see I have two little tails here. So I'm just gonna turn, this is a turning chain, so I will turn to go back the other direction. And it's a little hard to do this with my tripod in between my legs here. <laughs> I'm kind of reaching, but I'm trying to flip this over. And then you can see I'm going to start by taking my ends and you can either just pull them around from that side or you can pull them through, however you want to do it. But this doesn't always matter, but I want to be able to get to my the stitch right where I was, you see. Maybe if I don't work in my ends, you can see it better. In here, there's a, there's a place right under that turning chain. I want to make another single crochet. It's a little fiddly. And I finish my single and then I'm going to put my marker back in so I remember I want to be able to find that chain again because that's going to be my last stitch when I come back. So I just put a marker under both loops of that chain. Now I realize that this is kind of confusing to watch because I'm not really good with my light and my angles and camera angles. Um, there are lots of um, videos here on YouTube where you can just put in the search um, temperature blanket, the crochet, and there are some really good um, channels who do it really slow, slowly show you the stitches really easily. And so you can follow them much better than you can follow me. I'm just giving you an idea of what I'm doing. 
So I made that single crochet and now I now my pattern says, see, because I have a blue marker, see there's a blue marker, and my pattern says I start out by single crochet and then chain. I just did the single crochet and now I do a chain stitch. And then I'm gonna to try to work in my tails. But you will see that in the, the next, I have a, you might be able to see it if I, you're gonna see it better when I have a lighter color. But I have a, a basic pattern of a single crochet and then there's a little chain one space. See this chain one space? And then another single crochet and another chain one space. That's, the chain one space is where we put the stitch. Okay, so I just did a, sing, a chain one and I'm going to find the next, the place to put the stitch, which is right here between these two. And you can see the single crochets look like a V coming down and the space is in between those two Vs. So, um, my, chain, my chain is right here, my, my space, my space. And I'm gonna go around my tails because we don't wanna weave in any ends. That's what we don't like about these kind of projects. So many things to weave in. So I'm just going to single crochet, chain one. Look for the next space, which is right here. Single crochet, chain one. Single crochet. And I'm going to probably skip ahead here so that you can see, it's easier to see without the tail. We want to try to keep our tension somewhat even because we want to keep the blanket kind of square, you know, we don't want it to be too tight. But that's that's just with practice. But anyway, I'm going to keep going. Just I have a pretty long tail here. You don't need that long of a tail. But whenever you feel like it, if it's too long, just give it just drop it and I'll show you when we get across what I do with those tails um, afterwards. Because they all should be tucked in and hidden. There shouldn't be anything laying out. Um, I did a single crochet, now I do a chain. Single crochet, chain. I always do the chain as the end of the single crochet. Single crochet, chain right away so I don't forget to do it. Because if you forget, you're gonna have clumpy, clumpy, clumpy. Single crochet, chain. Maybe now you can see the space better. There's this. There's the single crochet. Here's this. Here's the chain one space. So I do the chain one. Then I go into that space for my next single crochet. Chain one. I'm gonna skip this single. Go into this chain one space. Okay. I'm gonna just continue along here until I get to the next row because the next row I can see on my pattern as a much better has a much lighter because then we're getting into um a little cooler temperature oh no no I go into it's an even higher temperature we were in this green we're going to go into a lighter even a lighter green so for the next two rows so I'm going to come back and show you that then maybe you can see the stitches a little better I can hold it back a little bit you can see if you really want to learn the stitch, it's just real simple. Those of you who crochet know exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't, who don't know, might want to go visit another channel to find out. I wanted to show you a few things here. I'm coming up to the end of this row. I'm going to be joining on my lighter color, this lighter color, which I think you'll be able to see better. So, but beforehand, before I get there, I want to just show you this is my tail that I have, I've gone over. And I want it on the back here, and I have another one down here. That when I see that tail, I'm just gonna give it a tug to make sure it's nice and straight. And then I can take and clip it off, you know, close, close by. See, once it's already been gone over, I can just do that and then it's gonna stay hidden. So we don't gonna have any pieces and I can go over this at the end of my crocheting. When I finish with the project, go along both ends and make sure that there's no stray. Here's another, you know, give a tug on any tails that are visible and then I can just 
uh, cut them off. And then they're, they're gone. The tails are gone. Okay. So anyway, I'm coming along here to, um, to the end of this row. So I'm just going to continue on and, and, and make the turn again. This time showing you with the lighter thread, which might be easier to see. Um, single crochet, chain one, skip that space. You know, I mean, just skip the single crochet that's there, go in the space beside, make another single crochet. So we're alternating, making the single crochets are only getting built, the only place they get built, not on a single crochet below, but on a chain one space below. So the chain one space below becomes the place for the stitch. Now here my tails are in there. I could try to get all the dark on one and all the light, but I just pretty much poke my needle in there and just wherever the tail goes is where the tail goes. And this multicolored afghan is not going to make any difference on the edges if you see a tail sticking through, <laughs> showing through. So it's not going to matter. I remember there's that there's that end in here. I'm going to wait till I come back and I know that it's been secured every way it's going to be secured. And I'll get it on another turn. Okay. So here I'm coming up on an orange marker. Wait, what's going on here? Um, I took my I took my thread in the wrong place. There we go. I caught that funny. I'm coming up on an orange marker, which means this is a blue marker row. So that means, according to my pattern, I end the row. Um, with a chain one and a single crochet. So I, I here's a chain one, skipping this single crochet, and then I go into this, which was my chain, my turning chain. So I'm gonna that first in the first single crochet that I made in the turning chain, and that's where I'm going to put the stitch. I'm going to begin the single crochet, leaving two loops. But instead of pulling through with this, I'm going to pull through with my new color, which is this lighter color, this, this one. Pulling through, making sure I have a tail, securing this, um, getting a, making sure I have a tail, getting a um, single crochet here to secure. Okay, and then I'm going to turn, or I'm going to cut this, cut my old yarn color, put it away, out of the way, so I don't get all tangled, and back in my basket, and now I'm going to turn and do a row. I'm going to actually be doing two rows in this lighter green, because I had two days in November where the temperature right in a row was 80 degrees. It was actually 80 degrees both days. But according to my according to my uh, chart here, if it were 79 or 80, it would be the same green. So it was both 80 degrees. So I'm going to turn. I'm going to try to flip this now. I'm trying to work around this tripod that's in between me. So here we go. Make sure my yarn is not tangled up. It's much easier to do. It looks confusing, but it's much easier to do when I'm not trying to work around a tripod and work on a table and work with some lights and <laughs> those kind of things. Okay, so here's my end. And um, this is the other thing about single crochet. If it happens, I mean about crochet. If it happens to come out. Um, you can always put it back in and start. Okay, so here I made my turning chain. I want to go back in this space. I'm going to take my tails out of the way. I make my single crochet. 
That's my first stitch. And before I go on, I'm just going to get the, my needle out of the way, hook out of the way, so I can put my marker back in. And this is an orange marker. It goes back there. So according to my pattern, according to my pattern, the orange marker says I start with two single crochets. Not a single and a chain, but single, single, and then chain. So, getting my tails up out of the way, I just did a single, and I see right away I come to a chain one space. See there, there's the chain one space. So that's where I want to put my hook. Just get my tails up on top to get it up so I can crochet them inside. And then there's single, single, chain one. And here's my look for my next chain one space, which would be here. So it goes in there. I'm putting my tails there up out of the way. I hope you can see that. Am I holding that in place? It's hard for me to watch my what I'm doing and watch the camera at the same time. So in the space, single crochet, chain. And as you can see, you might have noticed I'm I am crocheting two golden retrievers inside my temperature blanket because I have two golden retrievers who happen to live here and even though they've never laid on the blanket or come on the blanket it's in the air <laughs> this is the air we breathe full of golden retriever hairs okay so I just continue on with my pattern fastening my ends as long as I want And then I'm going to make sure I get it up in the camera now for you to see the stitch. That's what I wanted to show you. Okay, I have I just made a chain one. There's my single crochet. And see, there's a chain one space between. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's there. You'll see it in your, right there, chain one space. That's where I want to make my single crochet, right there in that space. And then a chain one right away. Skip a single, go in the space between, single crochet, chain one. And I just keep going across like that, skipping the single crochets, only doing the single crochets on top of the chain, one space from the, from the row below. I'm coming up, I'm almost to the end of the row, so I have a few things I can show. Here again, I can show you, perhaps, um, you can see, the stitch with the light, the two contrasting threads, there's a little more contrast. I have made my chain one. There's a, here we have a single crochet, which is like a V, a chain one space, a V, a chain one space, a V, a chain one space. See, there's a space. No stitch there. A V, a space, a V. These are where I put the single crochets in those little spaces. Okay. So I'm going to go into the space, single crochet, make my chain one again right away so I don't forget to do it. Skip the stitch, go in the space, make the chain, whoops, make the chain, skip the stitch, go into the space, make the single crochet, chain one, single crochet, Chain one. Okay, I, I, I single crocheted, made a chain one. There's a space. I will single crochet in that space. But I'm not going to chain one. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to single crochet, crochet in this space. See this chain one space? Before I get to the marker. Single crochet. And there's my marker right away. This is marking that place, the um, first single crochet of the previous row. So I'm going to take that marker out. And in that very space where the marker was, I will put my needle in under those two little loops. Okay. I will make a single crochet. Not catching my thread. And since I'm, since I'm going to continue on in this same color, um, I'm not going to, I, I can complete my single crochet, complete the stitch, okay, complete the stitch. Now I'm going to do my turning chain one. 
I'm going to flip this around. Flip it around. Where's my, keep my marker here. Okay. And I don't have all those pesky ends. You won't be seeing all the pesky ends. Where did I just put there? I keep losing my marker. There we go. So now we can see very clearly where that is. Right in that same single crochet. See, there's like a single crochet on the end here. I'm going to go in that very place. And I want to put a single crochet there. Okay, I'm going to just hold it with my fingers and pull that out so I can see below. It's I can't reach and get the marker in. I want to put the marker, that is the, the stitch that I want to end with on the, on the return row. So I put that marker in there to hold it. And now since it's blue, I just did a single crochet. So the first thing I do according to my pattern, according to my pattern is chain one. There was a single crochet. Now I do a chain one. I skip this single, I go in this space. Single crochet in there. Chain one, skipping, going into this chain one space to single crochet. Chain one, skip, single crochet in the chain one space. I don't know if that makes it any easier without the tail or not, but I can say on my end, it's very fun to get to a place where you do not have to <laughs> weave in ends. I mean, even though it's real simple and I'm crocheting right over my ends, I don't have to worry about it. It's just fun to be able to just do it straight for change. Okay, and there you have it. Remember, I always end on a single crochet, okay? So this row is just gonna complete. I'm gonna go the whole way across, whole way across. I'm pulling that out, get my hook all the way across and I'm going to end since it's a blue row I'm going to end in um, chain one and a single crochet I will end by single crocheting in this row right here in this hole in this space between the V's I will single crochet chain one skip that single and then I will single crochet in this space that I have marked with my marker chain one and turn okay that's it that's it it's a little maybe complicated I hope I've, I've I might have made it uh, more complicated it is because and then it is because uh, I don't do crochet videos or knitting videos <laughs> I do uh, tarot videos and uh, and uh, witchcraft videos so um but like I said there's a lot of other channels that have it on but my result is what I wanted to show you my what the resulting project this would have been a lovely thing to do in the year 2020 when that was such a suck year um, to look back over the year of the color of the year, colors of the days. And um, even though we had a lot of sadness and a lot of horrible time in that year, we can look back and say, oh, we could we could enjoy the color of the days, the color of the days. So that's what it, that's what this is all about. This video is stepping back and enjoying the color of each day. <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any interest in seeing more of these kind of videos, any of you, let me know. Um, I I said this one initially. I had said that this was intended to be a kind of a scrap a scrap busting video. I mean project for me. It kind of is, but it isn't really because I wanted the same kind of yarns, etc. So I end up buying. You know, I'm still buying yarn to go into it, but I am working on a knitted blanket that is um, using true scraps, true absolute scraps, just the little tiniest bits of, of things in that one that if you're interested in seeing that, let me know and I can share that in the future. So anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, boy, is this going to be a mess to edit. <laughs> As always, I am Rebecca the Good Wife and um, I wish you blessings.